Hey, good morning and thanks for joining today's service. Glad you can be with us. We're in the book of Acts. If you got a Bible, open up to chapter 9. Uh, we're in a series called Scattered to Grow. Uh, this early church, these Jesus followers, had suffered greatly from a season of persecution that had scattered them. But in the midst of trouble, God was growing their faith deeper and God was growing his family broader as they took the best news in the world out to new communities. So today we come to uh, two guys, one we met last week named Saul. Uh, Saul, as we first met him, was a terrible man. Arrogant, self-righteous, violent, a persecutor. He was there when they lynched Stephen, and now he's looking to hunt down new believers in the city of Damascus, far away in Syria. But on the road to Damascus, Saul had a life-changing encounter with the risen Jesus Christ. He uh, realized what he had been doing and all the, the shame and guilt of his blindness came down on him, but he experienced really a, a total turnaround with Jesus Christ. But now he's in this no, no man's land. See, all of his former associates think he's a traitor, and so they're ready to hunt him down and kill him. And on the other hand, none of the new Christians trust him. Nobody wants to be anywhere close to him. And into his life, God brings a man named Barnabas who's got a gutsy faith and will encourage Saul and the whole church by what he does. So um, I want to give you a little uh, uh, mental picture here. The other day I was out in the yard, super windy day, hawk flying up high in the wind, and the hawk lands on the top branch of the tallest tree in the yard. <clears throat> and because the wind is blowing the tree so much, it can't keep its balance. It keeps losing its position. And I was thinking, you know, any human up there hanging onto that branch would be scared to death to fall. But of course, that wasn't the hawk's uh, concern at all because when it would lose its balance, it would simply spread its wings <clears throat> and the wind would give it a little lift and then it would reposition itself back and land on the tree branch again. Well, you know, that hawk wasn't always a fully uh, mature bird able to soar. Uh, it came into the world out of an egg and it had wings that were too weak to fly. And yet in God's design, it grows, it matures until it can soar in the wind and uh, sit on top of a swaying tree without any fear. And I think that's a great picture of our Christian life. When we first come to Jesus, we too um, have a new faith in Christ, but it's not very strong. It's got a lot of growing to do before we can really live life uh, to the fullest. So today what we're going to be talking about is how do you grow from that fledgling new faith that's just beginning to trust God to a mature, gutsy faith like Barnabas has that not only has what you need to do what God wants, but has something positive to give away to others. So <clears throat> Acts 9, verse 20, I want to invite you to read along. Uh, Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. Immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is indeed the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Isn't this the same man who caused devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked? Didn't he come here to arrest them and take them in chains to the leading priest? Saul's preaching became more and more powerful, and the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. <clears throat> and after a while, some of the Jews plotted together to kill him. They were watching for him day and night at the city gate so they could murder him, but Saul was told about the plot. So during the night, some of the other believers lowered Saul in a large basket through an opening in the city wall. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. <coughs> then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. So Saul stayed with the apostles and went all around Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. He debated with some Greek-speaking Jews, but they tried to murder him. When the believers heard about this, they took Saul down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus, his hometown. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and it became stronger as believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. <clears throat> Let's pray. 
Uh, Father, uh, we just believe that you love the world so much that you gave your son uh, to be not just a teacher, but a savior. That uh, Jesus, you are not uh, a dead philosopher in a grave, but you are risen, the living son of God who still changes lives. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will take your word and speak to us because we need the same kind of faith We need the same kind of courage. We need the same kind of obedience. Lord, you know all the challenges that we face. Uh, You know the trials that we're going through. And we just pray today, Lord God, that you will put your spirit in us in such a way that we are able to live with a courageous faith and speak courage into the hearts of other people. In your name we pray, amen. So... Here's what we're talking about today, growing in your faith, growing from a new fledgling faith that is just beginning to learn how to trust God to a mature, gutsy faith that's ready to do anything God calls you to do. We're looking to help each other move from a starting point of beginning to follow Christ to then engaging with each other so that we can encourage each other and share the Bible together serve with each other so that for all of us, our faith grows into this uh, kind of person like Barnabas became, where he was ready to honor God with whatever assignment God gave him. So uh, for a moment, put yourself in Saul's shoes. Um, He's had this radical encounter with with Jesus. His life's been totally turned around. His former associates now have uh, decided he's the enemy, he's a traitor. They try to hunt hunt him down and kill him. Uh, He escapes from the city of Damascus, smuggled out in this basket over the wall. Comes to Jerusalem. Uh, He's eager to meet with the church there, and nobody wants to have anything to do with him. Now, to be fair, uh, Saul had given them all a terrible case of PTSD. Earlier in the book, Saul was there when they lynched Stephen. Uh, He was there when they were terrorizing Christians and dragging them out of their homes. Uh, People's lives had been wrecked and ruined by Saul and people like him. And so it is understandable that when he comes back, they do not throw arms around him. Uh, Quite the opposite. They are up at night wondering, what are they going to do? Keep the bags packed in case we have to grab the kids and run for their lives. They were not going anywhere near Saul. Well, God saw what was happening God knew all about Saul's past, but he also knew all about Saul's future. And in a moment in this critical period, he sent a man named Barnabas, whose nickname means son of encouragement. (coughs) He is a man who by character lived out a gutsy faith that would come into a man's life like Saul and listen to his story and hear what God had done. And I want you to know that if you want to be a man or woman of encouragement, It begins by you being willing to invest yourself in other people, to listen to their story, to take them at the word, to not be cynical, to not be critical, to not be condemning, but to be willing to take a chance on a new believer and enter into a relationship with them. Barnabas was that kind of guy. He was willing to step out where nobody else in the church was willing to go and do what God wanted done in Saul's life. (laughs) And it turns out that the two of them would end up having a long, enduring relationship that started in this moment when Barnabas had a faith that overcame his fear because he knew all about Saul's background too, but he was willing to live differently than the rest of the church at that time. Uh, A gutsy faith doesn't make you foolish. A gutsy faith doesn't uh, lead you to do stupid things so you can showboat. What a gutsy faith does is make you responsive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and to do what other people might call risky, but what you will call obedience to the leading and guiding of Jesus Christ. So Barnabas wasn't new in his faith. He had been walking with the Lord for a while. And I want you to back up a few pages to Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, we first meet Barnabas. Um, Peter and John had been arrested and brought to trial. The whole church has been praying for courage and boldness. 
God pours out the Holy Spirit on the believers and they begin telling people boldly about who Jesus is. But I want you to look at what um, courageous faith looked like in the community there. End of chapter 4, verse 32 says, All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. <clears throat> the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was on them all. There were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi, and he came from the island of Cyprus, and he sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. <coughs> Excuse my cough. Uh, understand, Barnabas had been walking with the Lord, taking steps of faith, growing, <coughs> experiencing the inflow of the Holy Spirit. And out of everything that was going on in the Jerusalem church, the word of God singles him out as an example of generosity that comes from a strong faith and ends up encouraging the whole Christian community. Folks, um, this is what I want to say to you today. Um, for most of us, as we become Christians, one of the first areas where we will grow or not grow in our faith is this area of generosity and giving. See, um, money is never just about money. Money is about our security and identity. And if I believe that I'm only secure if I have more money than I have now, and if I believe my identity is all wrapped up in spending my money on me, then that is going to cut off this opportunity for generosity, which is a demonstration of putting your faith into practice. It's uh, having a faith that's not just words, but actually works its way out in love and good deeds. Barnabas was that kind of guy. He believed that Jesus was his Savior. He believed that God owns it all and that whatever he had, he was simply managing for the honor or glory of God. But he knew that uh, he belonged to the Father and the Father was going to meet his needs and he was moved by the Holy Spirit to do really an exceptional act of generosity. Folks, um, for most of us, that's one of the areas where growing in our faith begins. Do we believe that God will really meet our needs, that I, with God's help, can get control of my finances so that I control my finances and they don't control me? And then out of that stewardship, I have an excess to give not only finances, but to give them my abilities and to give them my time to other people. Folks, your generosity is going to be one place where you will grow a gutsy faith as you respond to the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, that's not the only place where we see Barnabas. Um, we're going to flip ahead a few chapters to chapter 11. In chapter 11, uh, the church that has been scattered to faraway cities, including a place called Antioch in Syria, has uh, first been telling the good news of Jesus to the Jewish community, and then they begin to tell to the larger Gentile community, that is, people not from a Jewish background. And these Gentiles are ready to respond. They are glad to trust the good news of Jesus Christ. So the church in Jerusalem hears about what's going on, and they need somebody to go check it out, find out what's going on. Well, they turn to Barnabas, a guy with a gutsy faith, a guy they know they can trust to do a good job. This is what it says in chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 22. When the church at Jerusalem heard what had happened, that is up in Antioch, Syria, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived, he saw this evidence of God's blessing. He was filled with joy. He encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith. And many people were brought to the Lord. Folks, Barnabas keeps popping up in these key points in what God is doing because he's got this gutsy faith that is responsive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and willing to step out in obedience. And as he does that, his faith just keeps getting stronger and stronger. So uh, they send him 500 miles away to a group of total strangers. 
new believers, the majority of whom come from a very different background from his own. <coughs> and he is ready not only to take the assignment, but when he gets there, he's full of joy in the Lord as he sees what God is doing in their lives. And then he turns around and he's able to encourage these new believers in their walk with the Lord because he himself is an example of a gutsy faith. So look at what it says uh, in verse 24. He was a good man, <coughs> full of the Holy Spirit, strong in faith. Uh, he was a good man. The Holy Spirit will change you in the direction of God's character. Faith, hope, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. God will do good things in you as you trust and follow him. And people recognize that in Barnabas. And God wants people to be able to recognize that in you. It says he was strong in the faith. Uh, your faith is not a static thing. It's like a muscle. It grows as you feed it. And you feed it by word, scripture, prayer, talking to God, and fellowship with other believers. But then faith has to be exercised. Um, you don't grow in your faith just by taking in a bunch of content. That would be like thinking you can become... Uh, a good athlete just by a healthy diet. Well, diet is important, but so is exercise. And Barnabas had, an, had a, a history of exercising his faith so that they see he is a good man of godly character, he has a strong faith, and here's the key, middle of the sentence, uh, full of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> That's what this whole sermon is about. Uh, you will have a gutsy faith you will experience life change when you are seeking God's Spirit to fill you up so that God's Spirit is governing every corner of your life and that you are responsive to His leading and guidance. When you trust Jesus at the beginning, uh, you become a new creature. The Holy Spirit comes into your life. The Bible says you're given a new birth. But you're kind of like that fledgling bird. You're just out of the egg. You don't look at the beginning like you're going to look at the end. But as you trust the work of the Holy Spirit, as you seek God, He will fill you from within and give you faith and hope and love and everything that you need to live for Him. And so um, <coughs> I want you to understand something today. Um, if you had an encounter with God years ago that was life-changing for you, my question for you is, what is your encounter with God today? Um, it's great to hear about somebody's past story of what God has done back then. But the question is, what is God doing in you right now? Because you can't live today's journey on last week's or last month's faith. You need an ongoing connection with God that resupplies you from the inside out. That's what made uh, Barnabas a man of character. That's what made Barnabas a man of encouragement. That's what gave him a gutsy faith. He had this ongoing living connection with God in which the Spirit of God was filling him on a daily basis. And folks, you can have the same thing. This is not just for heroes in the Bible. Go back to where we started out, chapter 9. This is what it says, chapter 9, verse 31. The church had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. It became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. That is, the believers were seeking to live life God's way. They were being obedient to the direction of the Lord. And then it says this, And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. Folks, if you are growing in, in your faith, what God is doing in you is going to overflow and impact the people around you. God will have assignments for you you will see people who are lonely, needy, and discouraged. And out of the overflow of your life, you will have something to give to them. <coughs> Everybody needs encouragement, and that includes you. And it's great on those days when we get it from other people. But understand two things. You cannot give away what you don't have, and other people can't give you what they don't have. And so when we are dry, lonely, and empty... It is to the Lord that we must turn to get our batteries recharged. He's the only one who never runs out of juice. Um, <clears throat> I remember years ago when I was at Park Avenue Church in Minneapolis, the old Methodist pastor used to say, I needed, or that he needed, a new Pentecost every morning. 
And as a young man, I didn't really understand what he meant that by that, but I do now. What it means is that, that today I need a relationship with God that is recharging and rejuvenating my life as I respond to him in obedience. Jesus said this in Luke 11, um, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. God is like a good father. As a father gives a hungry child breakfast, your father will give you the Holy Spirit as you ask of him. So before we wrap up today, I want to introduce you to a little friend of mine. Uh, this is uh, Lucky, uh, Lucky the Duck. And he and I have known each other a long time. And uh, Lucky loves to do one thing more than anything else. He loves to flap his little wings. And I tell you what, he loves to flap them fast and long, and he can go, 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 go. But you know, Lucky is just like me. He's just like you. He does wear out over time. He gets tired. He gets lonely. Uh, circumstances get difficult. And Lucky can kind of feel like he's all dried up on the inside. And when that happens, he loses his flap. He's a floater, but he's not a flapper. And folks, for Lucky to get recharged, he's got to stop what he's doing and plug in to a higher source of power than what he has. What he needs, he can't get from the other ducks. You understand? He's got to tap in to a source of energy that is going to re-energize him from the inside out. And when that happens, guess what? Lucky gets his flat back. Well, folks, I need the same thing. And you probably do too. I cannot get from the other people in my life all the encouragement that I need. I have to get it from the Lord so that the Lord fills me up from within and out of that overflow, I have something positive to give away. <coughs> Friends, if you're ready to do that, God will encourage you the Holy Spirit will fill you. He will give you opportunities to speak strength and encouragement and hope into the lives of people he puts around you. And that's what I'm praying that he'll do in our church and across this region, that we would experience a move of the Holy Spirit that will renew us from the inside. So like Saul, <coughs> excuse me, like Saul, we see people's lives changed. And like Barnabas, we are ready to do our part. Taking risks on people, engaging with people, speaking encouragement into the lives of people, doing things that others might call risky, but that God calls faithful for His glory, for our growth, and for the blessing of all people. Would you join me in praying for that today? Father in heaven, we need you. Uh, we need to know that we are loved. We need to know that we are protected. We need to know that you are watching over us. And Jesus, we thank you for being our way, our truth, and our life, for not only dying for our sins, but giving us the Holy Spirit to give us a new power within. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would fill us today. Guide our steps. Give us a responsive heart that we're ready to do and be all that you want. For God's glory, we pray. Amen. Thanks for being part of today's service. Um, if there is anything that we can do to help strengthen you in your faith, give us a call or send us an email at church. And if you're maybe a young new believer in the faith, we'd love for you to reach out and connect with us because we've got some materials that we'd like to share with you that'll help you grow in your faith as you take your next steps with Jesus Christ.